Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at Apocalypse and what makes him so good? Why is he such a sought after champion? Why was I so excited when I pulled him? And why do I say he was an account changing champion? All of those questions will be answered in this video. All right, so first let's take a look at his attributes. You know, he has some pretty good health. This is of course a rank five, five star. Um, his attack is pretty decent. All right, let's look here. Crit rating uh, is not the highest, but it's pretty decent. Uh, crit damage rating is okay. Uh, no armor penetration or block penetration. A lot of champions don't have that. Uh, now crit resistance. A lot of champions don't have that either. So having crit resistance means he is a little more tanky than your average champion. He's got some armor rating and block proficiency. So those last three, you wanna look at those together to get a picture of how tanky a champion is. So like his block proficiency is 64. Now there are other champions that have higher block proficiency but they may not have any armor rating or their armor rating may be lower than his armor rating and they may not have any crit resistance. So you want to look at those three kind of together. All right. Now let's take a look at his synergies. Now this first synergy called the first one he has with himself and he will gain 15% attack rating for every mutant on the team excluding himself. So that means if you have a full team of mutants, he's going to have plus 60% attack rating. That is huge. That's how much I get when I'm running full suicides. Now, I don't know if diminishing returns kicks in. Uh, you're probably not going to get 120% attack if you're running suicides and have a full mutant team, but you're still gonna get a lot of attack, okay? Now, this second um, synergy, I found very, very interesting. So Apocalypse is gonna start the fight with a maximum number of genetic code. And we'll talk a little bit more about the significance of that uh, later on. But here's who he has a synergy with, Mr. Sinister, not bad. Kang, generally a trophy champion, but if you look here, that synergy, we're not gonna go into it, um, he gets a lot better with a synergy, okay? And then you have Cable. When you make Cable a horseman, and we'll talk about that later as well, uh, he becomes one of the best horsemen. It improves him so much, it is ridiculous. So having this synergy and making him a horseman makes him a natural one to add to your team. This, out of all three of these, I would add Cable to my team with Apocalypse. All right, now these next ones we're not going to go into, but... They make each of these champions, OG Storm, it makes her a whole lot better. Storm Pyramid X makes her a whole lot better. And if you look at the red text here, when they are made a horseman, they get an additional boost, okay? They get a, a little benefit, you know, extra benefit. All right, here's one with Psylocke. And here's one with Gambit. And here's one with Wolverine, and I will be making videos on Wolverine as a horseman. All right, I have him as a rank five. I don't have Cable as a rank five, but I do wanna make some videos on him as well. And then last but not least, Archangel. All right, so my Archangel is rank four, but I will also make some videos on Archangel. Uh, this is, just one of the reasons that I was so excited. He's got these synergies and also the ability to make 
horsemen. All right, and we'll talk about that in a minute here. So here are his abilities. Now, first off, he does not need to be awakened. As you can see here, his awakened ability just allows him to heal up in between fights. So if you got low on your first fight with him, you could basically uh, just play with other champions and for every fight, he's gonna regenerate a little bit. So it'll save you some health potions. That's it. So definitely not a champion that needs to be awakened. And honestly, his awakened ability is not that useful. You know, you save health potions. You can farm health potions. All right, so I wouldn't use a gem on him. As you can see, I did not use a gem on him unless you wanted to, to boost your prestige a little bit. I don't know if he has high prestige or not, but definitely not for his, um, his utility. He has plenty of utility outside of his signature ability. So I promised we would talk about that genetic uh, enhancement, the genetic code, and he's gonna start a fight with one persistent charge. But if he's defending, so that means if you're fighting against him, he's going to start with two. And you can see below, and we'll talk about those, that he gains different abilities as he gains genetic code, all right? And if he's on the final boss node, he's going to start with three, okay? So you're fighting him as a final boss, he's gonna have a minimum of three. And then when he defeats someone, as you can see here, non-robot, he's gonna gain another one, and then he will have max, all right? Uh, so you wanna go against him first, if you're fighting him against, uh, you know, the final node, you want to go against him with a robot first so that he at least won't be gaining more genetic code. And then, you know, if you don't get the one shot, uh, you're not making it harder for the next people to fight him. All right. So here's another. He will gain two genetic code at the start of the fight when he's fighting a mutant. So you don't want to fight him if it's not a robot. You don't want to fight him with a mutant if you can help it. Unless he already has max genetic code, then it doesn't matter. All right, at the start of the fight, he's going to gain one indefinite passive prowess so they cannot be nullified uh, for each genetic code. See, now we start to get into why these genetic codes are so important and why that synergy was just awesome, okay? Because when you have that, he's gonna start at max, which is four, and that means he's gonna start with four passive prowesses, which will increase his special attack damage by 40% right off the bat, just for having that synergy with Cable or Mr. Sinister or Kang, okay? Now, when he has three genetic code or more, he becomes stun immune while he's striking. And when he has max, when he strikes the opponent's block with a light attack, he's gonna inflict a stun debuff. So that's great for breaking their block, okay? So those genetic codes are very useful and important. And starting with four, just gives you a head start because you will be able to gain it during the quest as you defeat other opponents. All right, so here's some more utility for Apocalypse. He will develop an immunity to bleed, incinerate, and disorient over eight seconds while suffering from them. And once he develops that immunity, it lasts for the entire quest. So let me explain why that is so awesome. Now, I run suicides. I have the mastery double edge. So for 16 seconds at the start of every fight, I will take bleed damage. He's going to develop an immunity halfway through. And then 
I won't have to worry about a bleed. He just became more, you know, suicide friendly. Now, the incinerate and disorient makes him great for uh, paths like a uh, hazard shift. But if he's going against anyone, uh, a node or a champion that does incinerate like Human Torch, he's going to develop an immunity to the incinerate. But he has to have, you know, been affected by it for at least eight seconds. But that is amazing. He can develop this immunity and it lasts for the entire quest. Okay. Now, if that wasn't good enough, every time an opponent evades, he's going to gain 10% chance to bypass the evade. So that means they can evade 10 times and that's it. They are not going to be able to evade him anymore. So going up against someone like Nightcrawler, he will evade 10 times and that is it. Okay. Uh, and that will persist for the rest of the quest. So I love this feature of Apocalypse. You know, this gives him such a huge amount of utility. But if that's not good enough, we have more. Opponents suffer 100% purifiability accuracy reduction. That means they're not purifying his debuffs. And we're gonna talk about his debuffs right now. So heavy attacks, he has a two hit heavy and both of his hits will inflict a bleed over seven seconds. It'll also refresh any weakness, poison, concussion and degeneration effect on the opponent that he placed on them. Now here's one for just all special attacks. If they are suffering from a damage over time, and we just read how he can put a bleed on them. So do a heavy, fire your special. They have a bleed on them that they can't purify. His special attack debuffs trigger on activation and last 30% longer. And each hit deals a burst of physical damage for each personal weakness, poison, concussion, or degeneration. That is all special attacks. OK, now let's get into his special attacks. So in addition to that, which affects every special attack, here's what his special attacks do. So uh, the debuff that they can put on and they can put on two debuffs. If you end your combo with a light attack and fire a special, you're going to put a weakness on them with the special one. If you end with a medium and fire your special, you're gonna put a poison on them. And you can see that it reduces their health recovery by 30%, it's non-stacking, and it lasts for 25 seconds. And remember, when you fire a heavy, you'll refresh it. So you can ramp up, you know, you can put a poison one time, fire the special one, you can put a weakness, fire the special one, all the time firing off heavy attacks to keep them going. All right, then you got the special two, which is very similar, but this special two attack will inflict a debuff that's determined by the last light or medium, just like the special one. If you're fighting a mutant, or if he has four genetic code, remember that synergy where he gets a max it's just starting off? It's really nice. Uh, it will trigger both of these debuffs. All right, so if you end it in a light, it'll put a concussion. If you end in a medium, it'll put a non-stacking degen. All right, so that's the special one and the special two. Now, this special three, now say you've been keeping it up and you have all of these on him and you've been hitting your, your heavy attack, keeping them up, and you fire your special three. All of those debuffs, the weakness, the poison, the concussion, and the degen 
are going to be re-triggered at 100% potency and paused indefinitely. Okay, that is huge. And if you don't have any of them, if you weren't, uh, you know, firing your heavies off and you let them drop off, then it's going to inflict two of them at random. They won't get the extra potency and they won't be paused. So you really want to have these going before you fire your special three off. Okay. Now, all of that makes Apocalypse just a beast. Okay. He is a utility god. Love it. He's, he's a lot like Warlock. But he has, in my opinion, even more utility than Warlock. All right. So we've talked about the different utility. Um, we talked about how he can ramp up his damage. Let's talk about one of his biggest features. The one that I felt makes him account changing. And it's his ability to create horsemen. First of all, in order to create a horseman, you have to be at max genetic code. Again, remember the synergy. This makes it much, much nicer because you'll start the fight with full genetic code. And if you don't want to continue that fight, you can quit the fight or, or um, you know, re uh, revive or whatever, and you will be able to Activate the pre-fight ability, and the very next mutant you send into the fight will become a horseman for the entire rest of the quest. And what do horsemen gain? 100% bleed resistance. That is huge, because if you run willpower, you want bleed resistance, not bleed immunity because you'll still get the bleed, which will trigger willpower. So that means you'll be healing all the time, okay? You get an indefinite prowess buff, increasing your special attack damage by 50%, 30% offensive ability accuracy. You'll go unblockable for two seconds if your opponent purifies a debuff. And once per fight, you'll go unstoppable for three seconds when struck. So that's what all horsemen gain, and any mutant can become a horseman. That's why I say it's account changing, because any mutant that you have can be made better by becoming a horseman. Now, there are some horsemen that are better than others. Like I mentioned, Cable, uh, Wolverine is also a good one. Uh, Storm Pyramid X seems to be excellent. But you read the synergies. So if you choose one of those, like say Wolverine or Cable, you not only have the synergy effects and the benefits that they get from that synergy, but you also can make them a horseman and they gain these additional abilities. That makes Apocalypse a beast. He's a beast by himself and he's a beast because he has such utility and he can make any other mutant much better. All right, so hopefully I've answered the question why I was so excited and why I say he was account changing. So now let's uh, head on over and do our normal winter soldier abuse. And I'm going to try to show you guys a little bit about what we were uh, talking about here in his abilities. So you can see the team that I'm going in here with. It's a full mutant team. So that means Apocalypse is going to have 60% more attack. And I'm also running suicides. So you're about to see Apocalypse at his best. Okay. In terms of, of damage bonus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to get as many debuffs on him. Keep them going and then fire off a special three so that you can see, you know, how he uh, can maintain those indefinitely. And you'll also get to see the damage each of the specials do uh, when he has, you know, a debuff. All right, so 
first I do a heavy here, and you see those bleeds. Now, while he's bleeding, I ended with a medium, and then I fired off a special one. You can see that damage. That's some crazy damage, but you may notice that he got two debuffs on him with that one special. Now, if you remember his abilities, you'll know that if you end in a medium, it put one debuff. If you end in a light, it puts another one. But there's an exception. If you have max genetic code, it will put both of them on. That's why that's so important. That's why that synergy is just such an incredible synergy. Okay? So what you see me doing here, you know, I've got all the debuffs on him at this point. And look at this. His health is just melting away. Okay? Um, so at this point, you know, I wanted to fire off a heavy. Don't want to get those uh, expiring on me. Okay? Uh, while we work to get to the special three. And I also don't want to kill him by accident. All right? So we got a parry in there. Sometimes the Winter Soldier in Realm of Legends plays a little bit more passively. Uh, but we managed to get the parry and the heavy. We refreshed them. Now we're going to fire up the special three. And you're going to see that those debuffs are now on him permanently. Okay, see? They are not going down at all. And we're going to finish this fight uh, with a special. Now, uh, something that I did not realize when I started making this... I had forgotten that I did another deep dive on Apocalypse, but that deep dive uh, was for the content creator program, and it was really a first look, but I had changed it to deep dive because that seemed to be what people were calling it, but then I stopped doing those. So this deep dive is actually a replacement for my Closer Look series because we're actually taking a more in-depth look into Apocalypse and I have more knowledge of Apocalypse. Okay, um, but in any case, that fight went really well. You could see the damage he was capable of. Now, we're not gonna do this fight, but I wanna show you how to make a horseman. When I was first trying to play around with Apocalypse, I tried to find that out and found it actually not readily available. So you see there, you go to the pre-fight screen and you see that you have to have max genetic code. You hear that all the time, right? You need max genetic code to create a horseman. You need max genetic code to get the two buffs on. So it's really important. That makes that synergy shine. Okay, we're not going to make a horseman, but at this point, once I go in there with uh, a mutant, they're a horseman. That's all you need to do. Now, I did forget to mention this during the video, but if you go to the beginning of the fight, I have the double edge mastery, so I have a bleed debuff on me that's gonna last 16 seconds. Go back and you'll see I have arrows showing you where the bleed debuff was ticking down, and then after eight seconds, I get another icon. The bleed debuff goes away. I get another icon that shows Apocalypse is now bleed immune and he will be bleed immune for the rest of that quest. This works the same way with any of those debuffs that he becomes immune to, okay? Um, but that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Feel free to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.